Hey guys, I'm going to do another Linux install and review video today, but today is going to be a little bit of a different kind of distro. Uh, I try to review all the major distros, all the major releases, and you know, occasionally I do some of the lesser known distros, often distros I've never even heard of before I do the review. Today is one of those distros, but it goes a step further. Not, not only do I not know about it, DistroWatch doesn't even know about Zebian. What is Zebian? It is a Debian based distro based on Debian Unstable, that's Debian SID, and it uses the XFCE desktop environment. So, Debian Unstable, XFCE, I had to check it out. So, again, it's, it's a newer distro, it's not listed on DistroWatch probably has a very small development team behind it maybe even only one person uh, but you know I, I thought it would make a cool video and, and I'm actually pretty interested uh, I like the name Zebian and they have a proper website here at Zebian.org so who knows it might catch on maybe my video will help these guys gain a little uh, popularity uh, maybe gain developers we'll see it comes in 64-bit and 32-bit versions for the download. I'm going to download the 64-bit ISO and download this inside a virtual machine. I'm going to download it and install it inside VirtualBox. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. When you first launch the ISO, we have the options in the boot menu of Live, Live Failsafe, Install, Graphical Install, and Advanced Options. So, rather than booting into the live environment I'm gonna run through one of the installs uh, we can either choose install which I'm assuming is just your standard text-based installer or a graphical install which I'm going to choose the graphical install I would assume most of you are probably going to run through the uh, graphical GUI installer alright English has been chosen as our language I'm gonna click continue United States has been chosen for our location American English has been chosen for our keyboard layout. So you just click OK three times, it, it, assuming that it has chosen properly for you. If not, you can pick from the list. And we wait for it to load installer components from CD. All right, detecting network hardware. Looks like it's going to run through a, a little bit of stuff. I'm going to pause the video for a couple minutes. All right, configuring the network. Host name. By default, it wants to name it Debian. I'm going to change that, that to Zebian. Domain name. We can enter a domain. I'm not going to bother, though. Uh, we need to set a root password, though. We are going to need an administrator password. full name for our new user. I'm just going to name my user as Zebian. And it will also be the username for the account. Okay. Choose a password for our new user. So for the Zebian user, I need to create a password. And continue. All right. Configuring our clock. I'm in the central time zone. All right. Now it's detecting disk, partitioning disk. We haven't run through any kind of a disk setup yet. Okay, here it is. Now I can choose guided, which will give Zebian the entire 15 gig hard drive of this machine. That's what I'm, I'm going to do. For those of you that want to set up some partitioning, you would choose manual and go through manual partitioning. I'm just going to choose guided, use entire disk for my installation. All right. And... So it's about to write to the disk here. It's going to set up uh, all files in one partition. That's the way I want it. Uh, it does have the option of creating a separate home partition for those that want to do that. I'm not going to bother doing that on this video. Uh, now, our little review, it's going to set up an extended four file system and give it 9.7 gigs. It's going to create a swap. It's going to make the swap 6.4 gigs. That is a huge swap for a 16 gig uh, virtual machine. Uh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to make that swap much smaller. And basically, I, all I did was delete that 6 gigabyte swap file. Uh, on such a small hard drive as I have on this uh, virtual machine here, there's really no need for a swap. It, it's just wasted space. 
All right, I'm going to click continue and I get a warning. Basically, it says I haven't selected any partition for swap space. Yes, I know. Do you really want to return? Do you want to return to the partitioning menu? No, I don't. I don't want a swap. And it's asking me to confirm yes or no. Are we going to write these changes to the disk? I'm going to choose yes. It's going to format the drive and write to the disk. And it's installing the system. I uh, assume the installer will probably take five, ten minutes. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back once the installation is done. All right, that install has completed. It's asking me, do I want to use a network mirror? A network mirror can be used to supplement the software that is included on the CD-ROM. This may also make newer versions of the software available. By default, it's ticked on as yes. I'm going to leave it that way. Configure the package manager. It's asking about locale again. I'm in the United States, so it's going to try to pick you know the fastest mirrors, the closest mirrors to me here in the U.S. All right. Please select a Debian archive mirror. By default, ftp.us.debian.org has been selected. I'm going to leave that on. Uh, HTTP proxy, I don't need to do any of that. And we wait for it to configure the apt package manager. I'm going to pause the video again. It's installing the grub boot loader. loader. Uh, all right, install the grub boot loader on a hard disk. Install grub boot loader to the master boot record yes or no by default it's ticked on as yes and yes you should always install a bootloader unless you really have some reason and know what you're doing alright and then it's asking where to install it slash dev slash sda and I wait for grub to install and installation is complete now I reboot the system and see what happens alright we have rebooted our system Zebian is loading. One thing I will say about Zebian is while well, they had a, a really kind of prof professional looking website, uh, branding on the ISO and even on the installed version of Zebian, everything still says Debian everywhere. So, you know, they could uh, remove some of that and add some of their own branding to make it look like a more professional, more polished product. Anyway, uh, boot time was great. We got to the login manager very fast. And here is our desktop environment. This is the XFCE desktop environment. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and see if I can get the VirtualBox guest editions installed to get us a full screen resolution here for this review. Okay, guys, I'm back. I actually stepped away from my keyboard for, for a little while, uh, almost an hour. Uh, I needed to update the system, so I ran an apt update apt upgrade and being that this is based on Debian Unstable, Debian SID uh, and the ISO was a, a little older it needed to update about 500 programs on the system so that update took a while and then I was trying to get the VirtualBox guest editions installed uh, Zebian was missing a few dependencies that were needed to get the guest editions working so I had to play around with that for a bit and uh, I eventually did get the VirtualBox guest editions install but I still could not get it to do a full screen resolution I really wanted a 1980 width uh, the most I could get was 1028 here but 1028 works I can at least uh, do the video with this screen resolution 800 by 600 is just way too small it's just way too cramped to, to do a video with that but 1028 I can work with it I'm gonna quickly run through the XFC, XFCE menu here at the top of the page and go over the default programs installed on Zebian by default. I will tell you not a lot is on here by default. Under accessories we have our archive manager, we have calculator, we have the catfish file search which uh, searches your file system, character map, the file manager. The file manager is the default file manager in the XFCE desktop environment called Thunar. Fantastic, minimal, lightweight file manager. We also have Mousepad, which is the default text editor in the XFCE desktop environment. Nice, lightweight, simple to use text editor. We have our screenshot utility. We have our terminal emulator. This is the default XFCE terminal. It is uh, a nice little terminal, fully functional. We have XFBurn, which is the disk burning utility for the XFCE desktop environment. Under graphics, we don't have much. We have our document viewer for viewing PDFs and such, and we have the Restretto image viewer, you know, for uh, viewing photos. So no GIMP, Inkscape, none of that kind of stuff. 
you can install all that stuff. You know, just open up a terminal and apt install GIMP, or, you know, for example. But none of that stuff was on the ISO. Firefox is our default browser under multimedia. Not much multimedia installed by default. We have the Parole Media Player to play our videos, and not much else. We have the Pulse Audio Volume Control XF Burn again. Uh, no music player by default. Now you can play music in the Parole Media Player, so. You can use that for both audio and video, but you would think they would have a separate dedicated audio program installed by default, but they chose not to. Under Office, there's nothing here. The PDF viewer again, but no Office programs of any kind. Even lightweight Office programs like Abbey Word or Numeric, they're not here. Certainly not big robust Office suites like the LibreOffice suite. They're not here either, but again, if your computer can handle those programs, um, they're just an apt install away. Under settings, we have the usual suspects, our user settings, accessibility, drivers, appearance, desktop, display, keyboard. We have our menu editor, which will edit this menu here. Uh, network, panel, power, startup, time and date, users and groups, window manager, workspaces. Under system, we have our bug reporter and we have our task manager here which is our little system monitor which if you notice when I open this I gave my, my main machine has uh, a six core CPU I gave this virtual machine two cores it is only using two percent one percent well it's kind of fluctuating but a very very low percentage of CPU resources right now memory that's only using five percent of the six gigs of RAM that I gave it so really low resource usage. XFCE, for those that are not familiar with it, is known for being a very lightweight, minimal desktop environment. It's good for older machines or machines that are low on resources. So if you have an aging computer that struggles to run something like GNOME 3 especially, very very uh, CPU and memory intensive, KDE, similar, Unity, similar, you know, if you've got a computer that struggles running those or just can't run them at all, you might take a look at the XFC desktop environment. Okay, guys, let's discuss software for a second. You know, installing, removing software. Now, because it's based on Debian, you have the apt package manager. You just open up a terminal and you can just, you know, apt install, apt remove, apt update, apt upgrade, you know, all that in the terminal. And that's what I would do. But some of you may be looking for a graphical way of installing, removing, updating your system. So if you type software, not much comes up. Really, the only graphical software program you have is this one here at the top called software and updates and basically all it does it lets you add and remove repos and it does let you update your system uh, you can actually set it to update automatically if that's what you want there's not much else to it really for a nice graphical package manager on a Debian or a Debian based system you really want the synaptic package manager so for those of you that want a GUI package manager I suggest you open up a terminal and sudo apt install synaptic and that will get you the synaptic package manager and you will be very comfortable in that by default though not much installed on Zebian you know it's again it's XFCE a lightweight desktop environment and they didn't uh, cram a whole bunch of extra cruft on the ISO they just put the bare minimum of programs, just enough so you could get some work done, but they left most of the choices for software up to you. You know, install what you want on Zebian. So, what is my final verdict on Zebian? Well, I, I quite like it, mainly because I love Debian. And, and, and for those of you wanting a rolling release, Debian Unstable, there you go. Uh, XFCE is a fantastic desktop environment, very light on resources, yet attractive uh, and, you know, somewhat modern looking. I mean, it's got a little bit of that old school Windows feel to it, but it's not an ugly desktop by any means. So I like it. XFCE. I love Debian Unstable. Uh, the Zebian project itself, I will say, they're putting a, a professional uh, look and feel out there. I mean this background here, this wallpaper I didn't mention before, but it is a very professional looking wallpaper. Their website had a professional look and feel to it. So for something that's just getting started, something just getting off the ground, I like I like how they're getting started. I really do. And uh 
again nobody really knows anything about this project but guys check them out and for those of you that want to contribute or support the project you know may be worthwhile peace guys